Today, I'll be showing you how we made a special recipe in Nigerian, and that recipe is called Jute Malo. Now, Jute Malo is popularly known as a widow in western part of Nigeria, and it's not only in Nigeria that this uh, recipe is enjoyed, it's also enjoyed in the many West African countries. So, I'll be showing you how it is being prepared, and I'm very, very sure for those of you that are very adventurous, somebody like uh, Mr. Mike Atomic Shroom. If you have interest in trying this out, though, because of the slimy nature of the recipe, I believe most of Westerners won't like this because I don't know any of your recipe that is slimy in nature. If there is any, please let me know in the comment section below because I've never seen or heard any of your recipe that is slimy before. But we have a slimy one right here. Here we are called jute malo. Jute malo is called it will do so this vegetable is what i'll be preparing now this vegetable here so this it will do now is usually enjoyed along with amala amala is a kind of recipe that is prepared uh, from a powdered a powdered yam. so that's what i'll be uh, looking at now now before i continue this video spread thanks to my patrons for supporting this channel Thank you so much. That you support all this will not be possible. I'm grateful to you. No amount of words can expressly explain or show you how grateful I am. I'm so grateful. Thank you so much. Especially Mr. Mark, a man who doesn't want me to be thanking him all the time. But if I don't do that, that means I'm a thief for everything he's been doing for me. Thank you so much, all of you. If you also want to become my patrons, the link will be in the screen of the video. Also, if you want to, you know, just take me out for coffee. The link will also be there in the description of the video. Thank you so much. All right, let's go into the kitchen and I'll show you how we prepare this special, special vegetable. Jute mallow that's popularly called a wedu. Yes, to be candid, I know the English name of this vegetable when I started researching about this food. I had no idea it is called jute malo in English. We usually call it a will do, will do. That's never crossed my mind to look for the English of this word. So we learn every day. All right, let's go to the kitchen. The first step in cooking this special recipe is that you have to separate the leaf from the stalk. Now, once again, I'm sorry for the background noise. What you just heard now is okada noise in Nigeria, you know? <laughs> we use okada a lot because of our bad roots. And uh, an economy getting poorer every day so the the plucking now right here we have the chute mallow is it chute mallow then you have to separate it you separate it from the stalk that is how it is being done when i was a kid this is one of the things that i hate my mom asking me to do I used to cry whenever she asked me to, whenever she asked me to do this. This one in Yoruba we call it uh, on toy we do. Now when you separate the leaf from the stalk, that's what we call it in Yoruba language. It can be exhausting to be candid. But for those who are mastered how to do it uh, at very speedy rate, you can easily do it. Uh, for those of you that gave me a lot of advice on my issue with, uh, with YouTube, Based on the verification of my address that has been solved, thank you so much. I'm very, very grateful. Though another issue has also cropped up, but I believe with time that one is also going to be solved. If I can't solve it in the next one month, I'll surely come online too. And I'll ask for your advice to, on how this can be solved. Thank you so much. It was, at the end of the day, solved by Mr. Mike. A very wonderful man. Thank you so much. So this, depending on the quantity of the jute mallow leaves, this may take about 5-10 minutes or 15 minutes. But as far as uh, this video is concerned, I'm not going to prepare much. It's just for me and my wife alone. So this one is too much for us. I'm not going to, I'm not going to do everything. One thing I've discovered is that uh, the idea of soup in the Western world is quite different from the idea of Western, of our food. In Nigeria, just for me to be very, very precise. Now, when we say soup, I discovered that when we say soup in Western world, it means liquid food that you use your, your spoon to scoop and put in your mouth. You know, or not, put the soup inside, use the spoon to put it in your mouth. But in Nigeria, when we say soup, 
Soup is not eaten like that. Soup is usually eaten along with other food. Like for example now, you can use soup to eat amala. Like for example now, this is one of the special soup. This uh, jute mallow soup is one of the special soup that is used for eating amala. You eat it along with amala. You mix everything together now. Then soup, you can use soup to eat. You can eat soup along with eba. It is along with eba. It is along with fufu. That's what we use soup for. Not for eating it alone by scooping it with your with our spoon. No, we don't have that. The only one we have very close to that is pepper soup. That, that pepper soup is usually eaten at bar. You know, it's good if you are drinking cold beer and you are also having the pepper soup, it's very, very good. The pepper soup is very piquant, very, very spicy. Now, when you drink the cold beer, it will alleviate the spiciness of the pepper soup. So, it makes you to drink more beer. I love pepper soup when I'm drinking beer. It's very good. And my favorite beer is Heineken. Heineken is my favorite beer. I love it. So, this is the quantity that I'll, I'll be cooking for this video. This is what I'll be cooking for this video. I'm going to wash it. You have to rinse it because there are just so many particles, microorganisms, you know, stands, everything that will be inside. You have to cleanse it thoroughly before you cook it. There are three methods that can be used to prepare the jude mallow. Somebody might decide to, you can use a blender to blend everything together. You can use blender to blend everything together to not become, they become very, very small. Then, uh, or you can use a knife to chop it. But I'm going to be using a special method, a method of using this broom to do it. It's going to be fantastic. This is the broom that I'm going to use to process the leaves. So you're going to see how I'm going to do it. All right? So let me start the cooking now. Yes, we have that. It has been rinsed. So it's clean now. I've rinsed it. So I'm going to allow this to cook for 15 minutes. So you allow it to cook for 15 minutes. You may decide to cover the pot or not, depending on how you want it, but it doesn't matter. But it's not usually covered. I'll be using the method that mom has been using. So I'm vision the method that she loves using in cooking this recipe. So that's what I've used. That's the use of a very short broom to process the leaves. So this will be cooked for 15 minutes. After that, then I'll show you how the next process is being done. I have about three ingredients I'm going to add. I'll be adding number one, I'll be adding locust bean to it. This is locust bean. It also has cooking potash. This is cooking potash. Let me bring it out. I'll be adding cooking potash. I don't know if anybody have ever used it before. Those of you in advanced country, I'll also be using salt. Just a very small quantity of salt. That's all. Remember, this uh, recipe, this jude wallow, is not eat, the vegetable is not eaten in it alone. It's usually eaten along with a stew or soup. Then it goes along with your stodgy food. Probably you want it to be a four, or I want it to be a fufu, amala, wheat, semu, whichever one you want to use. All right. Those, I'm going to give this uh, 15 minutes or 20 minutes now. It's been cooking for the last five minutes now. I quickly want to add, we have salt. So I want to add salt now, just a very small quantity of salt that I'll be adding. Just a very small quantity of salt because uh, I don't like salt too much in my food. Just a very small quantity. Then the potash. Now, the salt is just to improve the flavor. The, potash, the main purpose of this cooking potash is to increase the viscosity of, viscosity of, the, soup, of the soup. Yes. The purpose of this is to increase the viscosity of the leaf. That's the purpose. To make sure that it's slimier than our ordinarily possible. That's the function of this cooking potash. So that's what I'll be putting there now. Oh. The Yoruba word for this cooking potash is uh, 
Kong, we call it Kong in, Yor in Yoruba language. The last ingredient, which is the locust bean, I'm not going to add that now. I'm not going to add it very later. When, when the recipe is almost done, that's when I'll add the locust bean to it. It's already 10 minutes now. So as I can see there, the next thing is now for me to use the broom, the broom to tear the leaves into pieces. So I'm going to turn the heat off, just like my mama used to do. The next thing is now for me to use this short broom to pieces the leaves. Now, instead of using this one, is a, is a like a, a difficult. This is the most difficult method. Like I said now, before the uh, leaves is cooked, some people will blend it, blend it, put it in a pot, cook it, and add the ingredients now. And some people also chop the leaves into pieces before cooking. But this is a method that I've seen my mom, it's a method that she uses, so that is the method that I've been using. Now you might be wondering how is it going to do it? It's very, very simple. I've seen her doing it almost millions of times. Just to use the broom to pieces the leaves. That is just it. Now if you look at it now, it is not slimy enough. See, is it, the, the, the soup is not slimy enough. That means that I'm going to add more, more cooking potash. Because it's not slimy enough. So that to make it to be, to be slimer. Many people in the city that don't use this method again because they find it stressful. But believe me, I still love this method. This one sounds traditional. No use of knives for chopping and no use of blender. Even if I used to use blender, there's no power, I can't even use blender. So, this is the second method that I can use. Mm -hmm. I think the viscosity has increased. So I'll continue cooking. This one will just last for four or five minutes or seven minutes, depending on the quantity. So this is the one that I'll continue with. And for this now, I can easily add my locust bean to this one. Now. This one, there's no quantity that you can use, depending on how you like it. Any quantity that you like, because I love locust bean, I'm gonna use a uh, more quantity of it. I think yes, I think that's enough. Then now uh, you cover it and allow it to cook for for five minutes or seven minutes. Now check it back later. All right, it's already five minutes now, so I want to ch check it now. Oh my God! My God, it's almost. Oh my God, it's almost not even. It's almost. It's burnt. Oh my God, it's burnt. <laughs> it's burnt. Uh, it's burnt, but I can still use some quantity. Yes, look at that. Look at the locust bean inside. Look at the locust bean. Look at that. I'm still a learner though. Some people can cook this far, far better than I can. So I'll be using this soup now, along with a small quantity of uh, scotch bonnet soup to eat for food for this video. That's what I'll be using to eat for food for this video. Since most of it is burnt, so I'll be using this quantity. Look at that. This is scotch bonnet soup that we've been enjoying for the past 30 days. So I want to add the remaining soup to it. Now look at that. So there's a special way that you can prepare the uh, the leaves that are before it is done. The leaves are done, you, have, you can add scotch bonnet so that there's no need for you to put another soup inside it. Uh, you just be able to eat it straight forward. But uh, I... I prefer this method 
So this is what I'll be using to eat my fufu. Look at that, look at the soup, special. It's a special soup. In Western world now, this kind of soup now, you may decide to eat it directly like this. Eat it lightly with your, with your spoon. But uh, in, now in Nigeria, if you eat soup like this alone, it is traditionally seen as a wastage because it's believed that uh, something must accompany soup. Yes, it is believed that a sturgy, a sturgy food must accompany soup. You don't just eat soup alone. So I'll be eating uh, this bowl of, uh, of fufu. This is fufu. You can eat this with fufu. You can eat it with uh, a bar. A bar. You can eat it with uh, wheat. You can eat it with uh, semu. For those of you that are uh, that you've been to uh, international markets in your places, in your different countries, you might have seen uh, semu before. So to eat it, you mix everything together. You mix everything together. So depending on how you want your, how big you want, you want your bolos to be. Wow, this is good. Swallow it. One of the advantages of eating a slimy soup is that it allows swallowing to be more easier. It allows swallowing of the bolos to be easier and more convenient. But I don't think um, a Westerner will like this. Though, I may be wrong. But believe me, this tastes nice. Uh, if you want me to describe the taste, I don't know any Western food that I can compare this taste with. There's no Western food that I know of that I can compare this taste with. It's well blended and then uh, it's also piquant a little bit at the same time. I just wish one day I thought Mr. Mike would be able to try this. Yes, it's very, very adventurous. <laughs> On this video, if you have any question, please let me know in the comment section below. I'll try to answer your question. But I'm enjoying this for now. Also, if you want to become my patrons, the link to do that will be in the description of the video. Thank you so much for watching my video. See you next time.